talking about uh, people who have no mandate why do you think this particular individual who happens to be very notorious he he doesn't have any record fighting the enemy i agree now with many others i did not agree before but i agree now with many others that he's really not fighting for amazonia what do you think could really be his objective because he was part of those who were with you during the washington um conference unity conference you had discussions with him what from discussion so the way you're observing him why do you think that he is so desperate to seek for notice at the detriment of anything that is alive no i remember uh, some of us we started this struggle at the time that we did not even know that this was the struggle far back in the yeah. days of john Kundi sdf we were fighting and fighting some of us are on, in, on political asylum where we are long before the war started because of our activities we did not know it was part of the struggle the way we define it today but when we showed our faces i was the private secretary to ambassador fossil for about two years so we were, we were in the struggle going to the united nations i saw far before 2016. so but we were not known we're just fighting, struggling, getting, looking for answers, going to places and so on, going to Congress, trying to see how we can, we can get this thing solved. They were not known. They, when the, the problem escalated in 2016, 2017, <coughs> then uh, they, they, some people projected themselves as the owners of the struggle. They started calling some of us Johnny Joskov. I remember when I, I tried to reach out to some initially when I was trying to ex establish the, uh, the, uh, the first defense council, the first national defense council that would bring all the fighting forces of Amazonia together. I remember clearly what each and every one, I spoke to everybody who I thought had some footprints on the ground. I remember I, vividly every response that some of them gave me. One of them laughed and said, um, I, 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 would, I would need to give you some time. That was in 2000, early 2018. He said, I would need to give you some time so we can build some trust. Now, from the time they arrested Sisiko and so on, people have been coming to me, looking up to me. So, but you want us to talk, to talk, I will give you some time and I see how it goes. The other one, when I made a, an audio that all of you hear, when he was telling Sisiko that they have to come and line up behind him, Johnny just come. So I want to show you the the, 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 the the entitlement that existed before the escalation. There are some people who felt that they own the struggle. They are the ones who have fought uh, before. Uh, they, have, they have spent 30 years, how many years in struggle, that this struggle, they're actually owning. All of us should line up behind them. You see? That we should line up behind them. That is the mistake. We are not Johnny Just Comes. We are not Johnny Just Comes. We have been around fighting. And these people, they get frustrated when suddenly they discover that they had no control anymore. When suddenly they discover that some of them even went to school, choosing particular courses to study, with the intention of coming to lead. How can you go to school because you want to lead, uh, you want to do a particular thing, you want to hold a particular political office? Is that not insane? We all go to school to be enlightened, to live in society. Somebody says, when to I even, Mr. President, I wouldn't even say lead. I would say to come and rule because leadership <laughs> is a service. To come and serve, studying to serve is not good. So I would say they went to school to come and rule. Please and, continue. And, and come, on, come and say what belongs to them. In fact, matter of fact, they said it before we got it. 
They really yes. want to say, so <laughs> you go to school, we'll share it. You are going to handle this one while I handle this one. You So you turn it this way so you can share, the, take this one, and I will take this one, I will own this one. That is the level of entitlement they felt. Now, when they suddenly yeah. discovered that, it, got, it didn't work that way. I want to tell you, I said this long story to tell you that some of them have gone to the destruction mode now. They decided to join La Republic to destroy the struggle because they have lost hope of leading the struggle or the nation. So in their psychology is winner takes all. It's either they own it and they, they do, do it whatever it is or you take it and you take everything and if you must take everything let's destroy it so they they were not fighting for the people they were fighting for themselves and so now that they discover that they are not going to make it their dream of taking control of this country and ruling this the country like their property and their own that something they own is not going to happen so they said, La Republic, why don't you come and let's cut a deal? Get, give me what you can give me. Let me work for you. If I cannot get what I want, let's destroy it. I will help you do so. That is the problem that we are dealing with. And I want to say that if almighty La Republic could not defeat Amazonia, there is no yeah. one among us who would defeat us. I know the pain is real, but they will not succeed. If this was all a struggle between one person versus another person, I can say otherwise. But because this struggle is embedded in the Amazonian spirit and by the Amazonian people, they will not succeed. They won't succeed. He so won't succeed. You're, you're telling the people of Amazonia today that if it is just, they are just like the women, the woman in the Bible who claimed a baby, but unfortunately we want the baby dead if they couldn't yeah. have it all to themselves that yeah. is really unfortunate you know mr president it's really quite interesting for us to realize today you know even by the time i was watching you as dr common sense i also thought who is this fine very intelligent man that's a journey just come like they said it it's interesting today for a lot of people for the world to realize that not everybody that speaks loud is actually fighting the battle at the background. It's interesting for us to know that you are not necessarily a journey just come, like they would want the world to think. This is nice. I, I so basically, not, I, I am no journey just come. <laughs> no, no, look at who you, I, I, I don't want us to rush this. I like us to really listen to this. You were the private secretary of Ambassador Fosso. So you were the private secretary of a history maker himself, somebody who is not just talking, who is not just a fighter, but someone who has participated to make sure that our story, to some extent, would have been preserved to this day. This is quite encouraging. Mr. President, I know we have taken so much of your time, and I would have loved to let you go at this particular moment. But if I do that without letting you respond to this last aspect that we have been arguing with in the news for, for some time now, Ambazonians will surely beat me. A few days ago, we saw uh, Philemon Young emerging at the helm of the General Assembly, the United Nations General Assembly, as presiding president. There are diverse opinions. Uh, Ambazonians will feel that is spite. It is a bad attitude for the UN to have done what they would have done. Your man who really doesn't necessarily speak um, speak anyhow, which we give our our feathers to you for that.